Dearest gentle reader, today I would like to discuss with you the one and the only Bridgerton series. Today, I want to talk about Bridgerton and my love for the series, the television series specifically. I tried to get into the books, but honestly, I'm just not that big of a reader as I used to be. And I know it's good and important to read, but I just, I don't know, something with my like ADHD brain, I just can't like stay focused on the books as much as I can with the show. I have to give all the flowers to Shonda because as a black woman, we do not get enough opportunities to play characters like the characters in Bridgerton, Lords and Ladies, Princesses, Princes, Fairy Tale Creatures. Um, thank you, Disney, for finally opening the door for people of color to play people like The Little Mermaid, um, Tinkerbell, things like that, you know, like representation does matter this is a topic that many people have um talked about before so i'm not going to go too much into why it's important but it really means a lot to me because i always loved fantasy based stuff and um fictional stories and things like that but you never really saw people who look like me in those stories. So I have to give an absolute big, big shout out and props goes to Shonda Rhimes and Julia Quinn for coming together to create this TV series because I absolutely 1000% am a huge, 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 huge fan. I love it. One day, one day, God willing, I'm gonna be at the Bridgerton Ball at the um you know and here in the united states they started having the actual ball that you could go to where people dress up and it just looks so much fun it just looks so hype like i want to go so bad i want to go so it would just make my day for me to be in the most beautiful satin gown with my big hair and tiara and the queen is just like choosing the diamond of the season and then she's like you i'll be like oh I would just eat it up, <laughs> eat it up, eat it up, eat it up, eat it up. Queen Charlotte was really, really good. I felt like it took a different direction from um, the main Bridgerton series. It wasn't, there, had, there, there was a few light moments, but the more it went on, I feel like the more serious it got. It wasn't as uh, lighthearted as it was, which obviously, I mean, the first series focused more on like this one specific family and yes we got glimpses of like the Featheringtons and like all these other families in the ton but the Bridgertons specifically you know I grew up in a big family so I feel like I can relate to their reactions to each other and things like that like getting annoyed with each other and poking fun at each other like how Eloise and Benedict have this like really good brother sister relationship um I just love it I, I love that family specifically because I have I'm number five out of six kids and it's always a time when we're all together so I can just imagine what it is like to grow up in the Bridgerton household the mother and with Queen Charlotte you know we get to see how Violet grew up and how she's really a bubbly person but in the first series you know we just see her as a mother but they did such a good job casting because the young Violet really portrayed how nosy and curious and bubbly and just outgoing Violet was as a child very bright very you know just out there like Violet <laughs> So to see her as a mom, it's like, oh, okay, so it makes sense why she acts the way she does because she's just always been kind of go with the flow, but like wants things to happen and really just all about love. That's all she knows. That's all she is, you know, she's like, I just want to, you know, I just want happiness and joy and 
and she really got that with her kids she had i i know that over the years aside from her losing her husband and um you know her kids growing up and moving out of the house like i know that she has had just the best time um and just experienced so much love with her family and with her children y'all lady danbury took me by surprise everybody has had their laughs at laura danbury you know what i'm saying we're not gonna go there we're not gonna discuss i feel so bad for her um in the series she really did not get and i hadn't read the books so i can't compare the tv show fully to the books because i haven't i, I tried to get into them I'm gonna try again because I really do have a love for the series. I think it's such a great show, but I haven't read the books. So I can't do a full comparison to the books. Only this opinion is only based on the TV show. Man, Lady Danbury, y'all, I, ooh, ooh. She was a very graceful wife. She really loved being, I think she took her position as a wife very seriously she did what she had to do for her family she called all the shots as a lot of women do and of course lord danbury you know he really thought that it was him but it was actually his wife the whole time um taking care of everything like if it wasn't for her wit and quick thinking um she, you know they wouldn't be where they she wouldn't be where she is in the current series like in the current day of the show it's so interesting to see the dynamic between how she was when she was little not little but like younger like a young woman um versus the old woman that she is now in the current show she's wise she's been through a lot she's been through a lot <laughs> um she's had her heart broken and that has to suck being alone like that she could have remarried and she may have remarried in the books but no because she's just lady danbury so i doubt it but i know it was awkward for her to not disclose to violet that she had relations with violet's father um it may have been a one night thing but he's such an honorable man but lord ledger Lady Danbury's relationship with Lord Ledger has just been, you know, it was sad. He was an honorable man. I think that he was just very honorable and he he did love his wife, even though he didn't always agree with her views and her, um, excuse my terms, I'd be trying not to cuss a lot, but she was just like bitching all the time about the people of color, like coming up and she just did not agree with it and he's just like he's just like this open and chill really cool guy and you know i felt kind of bad for him because he would have been so happy probably if he was able to be with a uh, lady danbury but he already had a daughter and being a gentleman he was a true gentleman except for you know he cheated on his wife but it was a one night stand he said to himself he wasn't gonna do it again so he didn't and lady danbury was alone and when violet found out i mean i know that that was awkward for her find you know seeing that the paper crown i know that that was awkward for her because she's like dang like you was messing around my daddy i mean if i saw that when i was little i wouldn't think that necessarily I mean, not little. If I would have seen that, if I was Violet when I walked into Lady Danbury's house, I don't know if that's the thought that I would have had because her dad told her that he was making the hat for a friend. He never told her who the friend was. And Violet just happened to see the crown in Lady Danbury's house. So I don't know if I would have just jumped to that conclusion, but I mean, it's been years, so I wouldn't even hold that grudge. Like, I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. But 
I feel bad for her. You know, she was she was alone. Apparently, she she told Violet that she had other relations where she could have, but it wasn't really. You know, they didn't dive too much deep into into that. So, Lady Danbury, you are. You know, I feel bad for you. Like I do wish that you could have had that true love that Violet always had and stuff like that. The Queen herself. I love again that Shonda <clears throat> has introduced this new character, Young India, to play Queen Charlotte. They do look alike a little bit. At first I was like, I don't see it, but the more I watched the show, I was like, okay, yeah. You know, it's not easy to find people who look exactly alike. But she played that part good. She really did to me. Like she played she played the crap out of that part. Queen Charlotte was very loyal to the end. She could have completely said, I ain't doing this, you know, but she I, she realized her position. She's like, I am the queen and I'm gonna stick by this man and we're gonna rule this kingdom. And that's exactly what they did. Like she became the face of the public when he was having his fits. And I loved how at the end, it still showed that they have a relationship with each other because in the series, it kind of came off at, like in the regular series, it kind of came off as like him just always being like that always being just mentally gone and that she was lonely she always seemed really really lonely like she had what's announced papers to keep her busy obviously and all her her little dogs and her ladies to keep her busy and obviously whatever is going on in the country to keep her busy i'm sure but she ruled, ruled her kingdom, you know? They had stuck it out that way until where they are now, like grown. <laughs> so I don't know. I just think that that comparison is just really kind of kind of cool that, you know, that love, that like loyalty. I'm just gonna stick it out with you, like for better or for worse, you know? I'm glad that they still have that relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's so much to it, y'all. But season three is about to come out. I cannot wait. My favorite character, Eloise. I love Eloise. I love the girl who plays her. She is so funny. Eloise is, um, I have to read the captions. Like, I have to watch Bridgerton with the captions on because sometimes I can't understand what Eloise is saying because she talks so fast and her voice is very, like, kind of deep. But I love her character. And it's going to be so interesting in the next season to see what's going to happen with Colin and Penelope. Are they finally going to get together or what? Like, what is going down? In the trailer, y'all got to watch the trailer. Penelope and Colin were in the carriage together. So I don't know if that's some kind of clue hinting at their relationship. Are they going to, you know get back together or not get back together but like get together or what like i don't know you guys but i'm so excited for it i'm here for it season three bridgeson let's go let's keep this going i don't know how many more seasons they're going to come out with i don't know i don't know because i hadn't read the books so i don't know what the plan is but i'm here for it i'm a fan i will be watching netflix bridgeson check it out y'all if you are not on board get on board get on the train because it's coming we haven't gotten a release date yet for bridgerton season three but it is coming y'all they are filming it's in production and i just can't wait one thing that i would like to see i would like to see the duke um in season three make an appearance like i know they he said he wasn't coming back but we all love john Roger page and as the duke and his and daphne's relationship we all love that. So it just would be nice to see them again. It would have been nice if he was at least in season two. Just one episode making an appearance, you know. But it's okay. It's okay. You're forgiven. I just can't wait, y'all. I'm excited. So with all that being said, I'm glad that I got 
all that at off of my chest because I've been thinking about filming this video for the longest time. I love Bridges, man. So yeah, there you go. All right, be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.